Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and welcome to this, the video on how to start your own Samurai Stroke Shinobi School. Now um, I think this is a great idea, but what's happened recently is that I've been getting lots of emails, and quite a few actually, from people who say, Anthony, we've been following your work. We now believe that there is no such thing as a ninja martial art, um, we were once affiliated with such and such a school, but we've broken away. And what we want to do is uh, create our own school, or we have created our own school. But what they've done is they've used ninja in the title, or they've said they do ninja martial arts. So generally what they want is to revamp their entire school. And they've come to me and said, Anthony, how do I do it? So I've answered this question a million times, so I want to actually now just put it on video so I can link them to this video. Right, first of all. Right, first of all, you have to know there's the debate about whether there's a, actually shinobi schools existed or whether it was a samurai school with shinobi involved in it to a certain level. So I would say to you, because you don't really want to go down that road of such splitting fine hairs, I would say to you, drop the name shinobi from your uh, title and call yourselves a samurai school okay so what you are is a school that follows samurai traditions you're a gumpo school or a heiho school you follow the way of the samurai if you will so that's the first thing you should do now what you should do is do like you do in business and use a model so what you do is you find a model that works now for us that would be samurai schools that exist in history or samurai schools that exist today yeah so there are plenty of samurai schools that still were going from the Edo period and they're still around in Japan today and generally they have a headquarters a hombu or a head a HQ and they all go there to train and you know enjoy uh, time together so what you need is two names. You need a name for the school, but you can also have a name for the dojo, okay? So what you need to do is pick a name that you're gonna be happy with for years to come. This way you don't have to change things as time goes by. So really, really have a think about your name. And if you want, you can also name the, um, the hall that you train in. So what should you teach there? Well, like I said, model it on a samurai um, school. So you need to have swordsmanship, you need to have hand-to-hand -hand fighting, you need to have military tactics, you need to have army movements, and of course, because you know you're talking on my one, of, you're listening to one of my videos, you need ninjutsu, which is what you're all after, is the ninja part. But I don't recommend starting a ninja school just solely a ninja school. Ninjutsu is an add-on military function, yeah? It's not a whole thing. It's a function you add on to the um, mechanics you already have in your body as a warrior, okay? To make this easier, I've been talking to my friend Daniel, um, who's the Tane Gawaha stuff, and we've been coming up, or he's been informing me of what his master thought was the best way. So, We've boiled it down to five main categories. These are the five things you need to do from martial arts point of view. Projectile weapons. You need to train people in projectile weapons, be it a gun, be it a musket, be it archery, be it shuriken, throwing axes, whatever it is, you need to know about projectile weaponry. Edged weaponry, this can be anything, knives, swords, I suppose, axes, anything with an edge to it, you learn, yeah? And you can pick anything you like, but the point is, is you learn how to deal with live blades and how to go into combat with live blades. Blunt instruments. Now this can be anything from a mace to a club to a staff. Don't forget staff is your main one here. From a small staff up to the bow staff. Yeah, the big one, the quarter staff. So blunt instrument covers anything that won't cut you. It'll just smash through you. A striking art. You need something that teaches you how to fight in unarmed combat. You need to know how to punch, how to block, how to receive punches, all the things that are involved in that you need to learn. A grappling art. Pick a grappling art. Once the fighting ensues, it's always going to go to grappling. So uh, on the ground, stood up, you need to find something that suits your group the best on how to grapple. 
with the last five areas you should have enough to um, start your fundamental taijutsu if you want, your fundamental basis for your warrior skills. So then what you need to do is you need to add gunpo to that, that's military tactics, yeah? So you need to start studying military tactics. Um, I will be bringing stuff out on this in the future, so don't worry too much about that. Um, but you can also read, at the minute we've got this manual out, so try this one. That gives you a good idea of the um, ways a samurai would work in the field of war, things like that. But all you need to do is go and study different methods of warfare. Ship warfare, um, scouting, all these types of things that are in samurai schools, yeah? Put them into yours. Ninjutsu. Now, this is what most people are here for. You've now built up your five arts, you can fight, you can, you know, scrap, you can fight as a group, your gunpo has let you move men as a group, your gunpo has made you think about how armies move, scouts, that type of things, but now you need ninjutsu, and what that is, is the arts of the ninja that come in and you will add them to your training. This is where you differentiate from ninja martial arts to actual real ninjutsu. You've done all your martial arts, now you add on the ninja. Of course, I was very disappointed with the ninja world and I thought it wasn't teaching real ninjutsu, so I do not recommend you get anything that was pretty much uh, published on ninja from other people at the moment, unless somebody brings out a very good book on ninjutsu. I would absolutely recommend you use the translations only. Now I'm saying that, I know they're my translations, but if you find another translation you like, that's perfectly fine. The point here is that you find a translation of a real ninja manual. Don't take anybody's word for what they think it is. You need to read the real ninja manuals and implement them in your school, okay? And add the ninjutsu. Dress and modernization. Should you make it modern? This is a question many people are struggling with. Do they want to learn traditional martial arts because that's what they want to do? Or do they want to do modern interpretations and some people are in the middle where they want to learn traditional and then they make it modern. That's up to you to decide. If you want to go traditional, go traditional. Don't wear the sort of, uh, unless you're doing karate of course, don't wear the karate black geese. It seems for some reason that the ninja people around the world want to wear black karate suits. Unless you're doing karate, don't wear them. You need to be wearing, if you're going traditional, proper like Aikido type stuff or um, when you do Naginata or um, Iaido, those type of people look traditional, yeah? So you've got to fit in with that. There's no point doing it half-half. If you're going to go modern, it's totally up to you, yeah? But I would get rid of this idea of the belts and the black gi and we dress in black, we're ninjas. Chop, yeah? Get rid of that idea. Go more traditional. So the roundup. You've got yourself a name. You've brought yourself a website. You've got a website that shows what you do. It lists everything and all the information you want and the times that you do the classes and all this and all that type of thing. Um, you've then got five different arts to teach them on how to fight. But what if you don't know those arts? If I were you, I'd get guest instructors in. Get someone who's a sword teacher, a recognised sword teacher from official school and steal some of their stuff. Of course, you pay them, get them there. Your, your students pay them, you have a meal with them and then you learn, videotape it and then you learn from that, yeah? Build up from what is a concrete original school, all right? Same with all the other arts, archery, um, shuriken, all that. Find real information on it and uh, put it into your school. So you've got your website, you've got your name, you've got your look, you've got your five arts. Then you've gone on and you've made um, your investigation into the military tactics. How samurai would, you know, be samurai. How they would wear their armour, how to wear hakama, all these types of things you've got fixed in your head. And you know what a samurai would do. And then in your secret scrolls and in your, your other stuff, which is not so secret anymore, you've got ninjutsu, which of course comes from our stuff. We've got all the manuals out there. So at the end, you should have a very solid school. A school that has a name, it's got an identity, and it's got real historical teachings, and it doesn't say ninja martial art, yeah? So I've made this video so that people who ask me this question, you can just see it. And these are just my opinions. You don't have to follow them. They're just what I would do if I was making a school. But you've got to be honest with people. You've got to say, 
this is a new school. Don't go for an old, oh, we're from such and such a lineage and we're this. Them days, there's no need to do that anymore. Them days are gone. Just say we're new, but we follow traditional scrolls. Remember, be pretty much before we came along, there was only Hagakure and the Book of Five Rings from Japan, really, and a few other things, but nothing that you could actually read. But now you can, so you can go off and do it, and there's more coming, so don't worry about it. Just start building your school, and don't worry, don't try and put yourself as a grandmaster. I'm the grandmaster of this school. That will just get you laughed out. Just say, I run this school, and uh, it's new, and we're just studying the ancient ways, and we're doing it to have a better life, and enjoy ourselves, and get healthy, and get more intelligent, and get more wise, and all those things that we do it for. Yeah, that's the reason we do ancient things, because we take the wisdom from them, and transfer it in today's age, yeah? That's why you do it. So make sure you do it correctly. Names. Sorry, I cannot keep asking my translators to think of real names for you. However, you know, you need to find someone who's Japanese because some of the names we get are ridiculous, but I don't really, I can't really keep asking my translators to come up with new names every 10 minutes. However, Miyako has said that Possibly she might have some time to do some. So I'd recommend Miyako loves pretty things. If you want, contact me and I'll try and get hold of Miyako. And if you send her something pretty in Japan, like a nice cup or something like that, she'd generally do it. Give her some words that you want. But but I can't guarantee that. Basically, come up with a name on your own. It doesn't even have to be Japanese. Why don't you just have an English name? And don't put Ryu Ha at the end. Just put Ryu, yeah? Something, something, Ryu. Finally, and I'm going to put this as above all the most important thing that should be done, is you should have, you should join the Ichigunichimi thing. The Ichigunichimi is taken from the old Koka Ninja Scrolls, which means one district, one band. And it doesn't matter if you hate that group and you hate that group and you're this group. Let's forget all them days. I am more than willing to work with Greg Park, with Krista, with Hatsumi, with any of these people, with whoever. People should share now information. So what I'm going to do is, in the foreseeable future, I'm going to start getting a website up, and we're going to start mapping out where people are in the Ichigoni Chimi world. So on your website, use the um, images that I provide. I've put some links in below if you don't know what Ichi Ichigoni Chimi is. So have a look at it and go through that. So apart from that, guys, start building those websites, start building those schools, and start getting some photographs and teachings online. I think you'll do a really good job, and uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. There is no embarrassment about starting your own school as long as you stick to traditional things. It's only embarrassing when you claim to be a lineage and it's not real, yeah? So just start from scratch and be honest. All right, that's me. I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.